How are you doing? I didn't even hear you come in. My name is Matthias Loscher. I'm a guitar player, producer, composer, and basically I'm a freelancing artist living in New York City. I first came to the city, I want to say in 2005, 6, and of course immediately fell in love with it, fell in love with the music scene. <laughs> There's really nothing comparable to the scene here in New York. We as musicians, I mean, we miss it a lot. We miss the vibe, the energy, you know, the variety. Um, playing close with an audience, interacting with the audience, you know, probably many things that you miss too, but um, of course for us it's a way of life. It's, you know, it pays our bills. Let's just hope that the venues can come back and uh, survive this lockdown. Meanwhile, we as musicians, you know, we're trying to change things up. We work remotely, we compose, produce, we teach online and are getting involved in virtual projects like the one that you're about to watch. I'm really excited to welcome you to um, This Is Us, a virtual project that was initiated by the Austrian Culture Forum in New York City. It breaks down or shows you our perspective as artists, musicians, and how we go for different stages in this new era of social distancing, living in a lockdown, and for the most part, having lost a lot of our work. We are seven native Austrian musicians. We all came for the same reason, the passion for music the passion for live performances. And the seven of us, just like everyone else, have been forced to live in the lockdown, in which we had to learn to be creative and express ourselves as artists without being in the same room, without being in the same space. This second part consists of four movements. It's structured similar like a symphony, and it reflects um, our feelings and our perspectives going through these crazy, crazy times. Part one of This Is Us, movement one, you might refer to it as an allegro, breaks down the first part of the lockdown. Being scared, being worried, um, being confused, not knowing what is going on, and composed by Peter Traumüller.
Yeah, and the time we're going through now, uh, I would say it definitely affects me emotionally. Um, I think I used to write happier music <laughs> before, <laughs> but not so much happier music. It's just more like I, I find myself sitting on the piano. There's a need inside me that, that wants to come out and in terms of more like playing more, maybe more denser chords or just like the harmonic material gets a little more, more atonal, I think. So I can, I mean, I think, yeah, it, it, it changed me a little bit. Yeah, and because we cannot meet in person and, and get together live, uh, I think my composing process also had to change. Because if you want to compose a piece that has a lot of improvised parts in it, then you can't really make that happen that easily because improvised parts means that it's happening in the moment. So my approach changed in the sense that I had to write out more music and be more specific about um, the parts that, that people do in the piece. So it's almost more becoming like a, like a studio production like back in the uh, 70s and 80s when that was you know, a, a big industry. So it's more like really predetermining the parts Okay, so I usually work here uh, in this music room and I have uh, my, my keyboard over here where I have, you know, different sounds and stuff like a piano sound. And I, I might switch sounds. I mean, it's just some basic sounds, but uh, it can help me get into the mood. For example, this one could be a cool, like... Like, so I can, I can establish a mood and then the piano is connected to my uh, my laptop where I use Cubase so this would be the, the full track and this is the solo section in this case and we are hearing the live rec I mean the, the recorded drums and step space but I can mute this and for example what I would program or play on the keyboard as a MIDI file is, is, is just this what we're hearing right now So I play this on the keyboard and it goes um, into the computer as, as a MIDI. So MIDI means it's not an, an a wave file, like an audio file. And that means I can change the sounds on it. So if I wanted to have the sound differently, I can do, for example, put a harpsichord, it's gonna sound awful. But just for demonstration purposes, you see, different sounds. So that, that's the, um, the beauty of MIDI, that you can just uh, outline different things with different sounds and uh, yeah this is how I composed the first part for This Is Us. I've worked in a band before where we had two drummers and it's it's a challenge, of course, but it's also amazing because you can make any groove sound much bigger. Because one, one drummer might play a specific pattern, but the other drummer plays on top of you and it needs to match in terms of rhythm and, and feel. But uh, it can really enhance the groove and, and can make um, whatever the drums are doing just, just fatter and, and bigger. So that's always a nice challenge. Yeah. It's cool for Steph's part or for you part, yeah. for your part. I mean, then you can play around with it, but I think, yeah, the song. I mean, I guess we both see it then. Yeah, I think the song, it's nice to have one drum set and then, and then some additional percussion. Or you could even do some cymbal swells or, or if you want, overdub some whatever. Yeah. Yeah, maybe just, yeah, maybe just a little light percussion. Yeah. Let's see. It's, it might okay. be nice to have more space. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So effortless, Peter. Well, drummer. you know, we are both from Salzburg, Austria, so what can go wrong? Well, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I see I see the logic why it can't work, why we can't have um, why we can't have concerts right now. It's I know and it's it's science, it's it's a pandemic. So 
that makes it easier for me to cope with it, I think, rather than if I would just not be able to play because I broke my hand or, or you know, some other things that could could prevent me from being an artist or like doing what I love, playing the drums. I'm, I can still play the drums, but I can still <laughs> compose, but, you know, I can't share with people. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm patient. But there were absolutely no gigs happening, especially in the first couple of months. Um, nothing was possible outdoors, um, so we simply couldn't do anything. Um, so I, myself included and everybody I knew tried to find other ways. For me, that's been teaching and doing small recording projects. Now, psychologically, uh, it was just very hard not to do what you normally do. Um, and find completely new ways. There were very positive things about that as well. I mean, I'm sure that uh, me and a lot of my friends have learned a ton about technology and how to use it and how to take advantage of it. Uh, but the personal contact with people, uh, especially when you play a concert and then you get to hang out with the musicians and you get to talk to people and you get their reactions, so that's something that's simply been absent from my life now uh, for the past, I don't know, seven months or something like this. Uh, so that's been difficult and it's something you do get used to after a little while, uh, but it's also something that I think about most days. Um, and I'm looking forward to the time when I can actually get back to doing that. This is amazing, like how, how music is, is still, you know, intimate and, and, and super original, like this. So, you know, I guess a lot of folks, not only musicians, learned a lot in that time how to approach that new situation and make something out of it. And I felt sometimes, sometimes people have that feeling that, you know, that they can't call you because it's that, Skype or Zoom or FaceTime thing, you know, that got more normal right now, I think. And I, I, li I always thought it should be more like a regular phone call, you know, it's just because there's some, some distance. Internet makes, makes, you know, creates a different kind of, kind of community and I think it's worth a lot. Equal opportunity, self-evident and meant for all. Looking back on it, it was one of the most meaningful things that I did. It was so helpful to feel like I stayed connected because that was a, there, there was grief there and there was a loss there to not be able to be in my regular rehearsals or um, preparations for shows. Um, so at least there was this connection on a social uh, and virtual platform. It's not the real thing, but I'm still grateful that that existed. Nobody could really imagine the trajectory or the implication of what it really means for an entire industry to come to a halt, right? Because it's not just musicians, um, it's uh, stagehands, it's bookers, it's venues, it's an entire industry. These are millions and millions of people. And I would be curious to see what the statistics are, you know, how many people are really directly affected being out of work uh, and, and having been out of work for such a long period of time. Part two, the second movement, is, you might want to call it a Largo. It's composed by Dennis Brandner, and it describes the second stage of the lockdown. Depressed, maybe, scared, very silent, maybe alone, very dark. That's the second part.
right, so, so what you see here essentially uh, is music software, um, which we use to record our music. So for instance, if, if this is the saxophone part, then I'll talk to the other musicians and I'll tell them what I need from them, um, and they'll then send me audio files, um, or the other way around, wh whoever's working on it. Um, and I'll just add them here, and then I can work on all of them uh, combined in this program. So the different colors would all be different instruments, of course, in, in this case. Um, and this is just um, uh, music notation software. So this is where I write stuff down after I wrote it down here, um, which is normally how I start each composition. Um, that's normally the first sketches. Uh, you can see that this is actually, uh, this is us part two. Um, so that's what I've been working on. Uh, we need to think about how we can distribute music without performing live. Um, and if that simply means that you have to think of the medium that you're going to use, uh, because it's a different medium, right? Um, and given the nature of how things evolved online over the past five to ten years, um, one of the things that's certainly influenced by this is the length of something, um, of a composition. So we're thinking about the length, trying to not make compromises as, for the, as far as the quality of the work is uh, concerned, but at the same time making it so people will still be interested in it. Because we all know that if you go to a concert, um, it's much easier to, to draw people in and to make them become interested in what you have to offer. If they find your product online, you're simply one of a million things. Because people, if they go to a concert, They've already decided to go to that concert, or they've already decided to go to that exhibition. So now everything else in the outside world doesn't exist anymore. But if you're doing this online, everything exists. So essentially you have to find a way to fulfill whatever sort of expe expectation or need there is. Um, and that's of course difficult, but one thing you probably don't do is write a work that's an hour long. Um, and that you will then have played by virtual instruments or something like that. I don't know, maybe it's an interesting project. That's something that uh, didn't occur to me. So, you know, a lot of people have adapted their, potentially their ways of writing or especially presenting things. Are you going to have visual support for your music, which is obviously more important when you're dealing with an online project. Uh, because if you're at a concert, again, people like watching musicians perform, but maybe they don't like them perform, watching them perform so much when this is just happening online and you can't actually feel it, what, what's going on. Um, so I think it's affecting how people compose, write, produce, distribute music um, very, very seriously. And I think that a lot of those developments will also be positive in the future, um, simply because the musicians themselves have a sort of larger palette to draw from. Um, honestly, I, I, I do it. I think it's challenging, but I, I don't like it too much because I like to be in the moment with other musicians. I like to feel the energy and I'm just like a, a live musician in the moment person. So my focus right now is not so much to try to make that happen, meaning you know, recording my part, sending it to somebody else and then making a video and then streaming it on Facebook. I think it's amazing and it's really the only chance to, to give music to other people. To me, I don't really feel that good personally about it just because I, don't, I just don't like the way I have to work. So I'd much rather use it as a, as a time to self-study and, and, and get better. of performance in the beginning it seemed like online performance is a way to survive or is a way to make make some money I don't think that's really true I think it's it's a way to continue to produce content uh, continue to try to be relevant but um, that was not a, a fruitful path I think from for most musicians I mean, I watch some live streams of my friends, support them, but I don't, I don't feel the same after I watch a live stream of some killer, killer band as if I would have been there. It's not, I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't meditate away on it. it. You don't feel it physically, especially the drums and everything. It's like, if you're there, the physical impact of a live played instrument, it just feels different. That's why live music will always be around. I think even when, with all the hardship it's going through right now, but like, I think that that's why it's gonna, always gonna be speaking to people in a different, 
on a different level. And that's, I miss that, and that, that I, don't, I don't get from live streams. The first uh, show I did was a solo show uh, that I did for, for uh, a platform. And it, you know, they had, you know, they even had a budget, so it was, so it was kind of, it was kind of a, 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 a you know, felt great to somehow play that, play a nicely paid gig, and, but you know, did it in my, did it in my living room, set it all up, played the show. Uh, I couldn't even see like who, how many people are watching because the phone was turned around and the other thing was, was on the laptop. I couldn't. So, you don't know if some, you know who, who, what's the comments? What, what is it like? You don't feel anything from the audience. Did the show. Totally went overtime because I you know missed missed the time. And then you know, all right, guys, that's it. And you push the button, and somehow that stream is over. I felt funny, and I didn't. I kind of cut out the beer before, but after that, I thought, yo, I need my, I need my after show beer <laughs> after this one. <laughs> Stepped. Part three, the third movement, a minuet, if you want so, describes the transformative part in these times. It describes going in yourself and reflecting how the world changes. It was a difficult year. Besides COVID, we dealt with a lot of political issues as artists, as human beings. Part three, brought to you by Daniela Bauer. <laughs>
One of the rare occasions to play a show these days like it's 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 i'm always always super happy if something pops up of all those contacts that have built up over the last years you know a couple of things kind of start up again a couple of folks reaching out again there's some outdoor gigs are happening it's kind of uh definitely we are super thankful if something happens it feels great to play again Botanical garden shooting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. And fixing stuff that's already fixed. No. So, okay. Besides that, there's a couple of things that might be that should be muted to have more clarity. But for the mix, like all the overdubs on the drums can, can just be like super affected or in the background as soon as it gets too busy. And this one section, that's what I'm I'm, I'm gonna look at this later. Like where the where the the hi hat overdubs are not in sync with the drums, right? Yeah, 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 in the bridge part. Got it. That's why you. That's why you called, right? That's yeah, the. That's the thing. No, I wanna. I wanna start once. Once you're finished with the mixing, so I'm just making sure you know. Yeah. You but roughly, that's it. Th roughly, that's it. It's just one part where I'm gonna. I think I have to edit the symbol overdub a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Beautiful. Peace. Yeah. Later. Yeah, the, the whole process of mixing is, is really exciting because the tracks come like every day. As I say, I make a bounce for the whole group and I get a track, you know, let's say I get a bass track and I put it in and I'm like, oh, wow, you know, this is where we're going now with this track. So um, while the track develops, you know, I get a sense of, of, of what it's going to be stylistically also. And it gives, it gives directions. Or it has, yeah, it has directions within the music already how it should sound so it's really it really dictates where where it goes so the last piece i got for this oh steph plays such a nice intro on this um was daniela's vocals tracks and we decided where is it down here to even put a little bit of um, 
a little bit of avocado on it. I hope she likes it. Let's see. So, it kind of goes well with the whole sound design. It's almost like a early 80s Herbie Hancock kind of recording, I want to say. And then we have the two drummers. That is the biggest challenge, I want to say. Let me just solo that for a second. To mix two entire drum sets, that's a complete, that was a new, definitely new challenge for me. Boom, here we go. Up. But they both sound amazing. Step. You wouldn't even believe this is recorded separately. I guess, you know, it's, it's my guitar stuff. We got some keys coming in this part. Oh, that's a chorale. Yeah. Peter Traumüller wrote a really beautiful choral, so to speak, that Dennis recorded using four different saxophones. Here we go, here are the saxophones. One, two, three, four. It sounds like this. Hard to, it's hard to have a, a positive outlook at this point after so, so many months. But, you know, I think it's really ingrained in human nature and it's something that's also very American in, in a sense, right? To always think that it can get better and to always strive towards a positive future, right? I mean, this whole country has been built on that. So we are, of course, hoping that it's going to get better and we'll be ready to perform. I think there will be uh, a major return of live music. People are hungry to be part um, of events, be part of concerts. So we're going to be ready for that time. I think a lot of people have also realized, and I'm talking about non-musicians or non-artists, um, that it's not quite the same thing. Um, looking at a concert uh, on your computer uh, versus actually being at a concert with other people and feeling the music in a different way, feeling especially other people in a different way, um, and they'll still be looking for that in two years from today. Maybe we should we have to do something to, to support it. So maybe maybe it's gonna actually get better. Like that, that, that people see, okay, we want art. We want to maintain these things. They have value. This this can cost. This this is okay if this costs a little bit. If, if the society invests a little bit, because like you get out, you get an output, you get a society, you get pluralism, you get. I know the, the melting of cultures and everything that New York has mainly because of its culture and art scene I think so I, uh, that could that could be an outcome I'm not I'm not ruling that out as human beings we all just innately understand how important this art form is so it's not going anywhere um, but it's always tricky when music is a monetized thing and there's a few that can make a lot of money on an online platform but now there's many that don't make a lot of money on an online platform. It's tricky to have a push from the, the ones that hold power to bring it back in the way that it was. We, we need this. It, we, it's, it's, a, it's an important aspect of, of human existence, I think. It's just to, to experience music, live actually. Music being made by other musicians, being presented to other people. Feels great to make music, I, 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 and the feedback from the audience is also is also is, is different since they they didn't have their music for three months. People are ready. Longer, to, yeah, longer. longer. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. four months. 
Part four, the final movement, an allegro if you want so, represents hope. Hope in the future, hope that we're gonna make it through all of this and then we're gonna come back all together. Written by Stefan Kondert, part four. <laughs>